how's everyone doing? So before we get started today, I want to do a few little bits of information. Sorry, I forgot that that plays music when that does that. Is my microphone? Yeah, it's on. How about now? Okay, that's a little bit better. Uh, a few little bits of information. In Blender, I will have this here, and if you want to watch this in YouTube later on, or you need to go back and see what I've done, pressing the backwards and forwards on your keyboard is going to give you, uh, like, only skips of five seconds. If you use the comma and period button on your keyboards, it will skip YouTube frame by frame, and if I've gone too fast, you'll be able to see what it is that I've uh, done here if I go between these and like it moves a little too quickly. Uh, next bit of information is I will be sometimes deferring to watch this channel, Hard Rooster Labs. I've got pretty much everything set up as it is, as I need it, and sometimes I won't remember what those things are and I'll just say go to Hard Rooster Labs and they will have a video on it. It is also important to remember that sometimes they go over the same thing twice in different videos, uh, some of them will be better than others. Uh, I'll try my best to try to help out with that as well. So with that being covered, how is everybody? Uh, no webcam as well today up in the corner because this is a tutorial video. Uh, stream, I should say. So, uh, a head would just get in the way. So, chat seems doing well. Welcome, Skibidaboo, C1X, Shivi, Crownless, Toon Verbuggen, and Badini. How's it going? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that everything in the scene is deleted. So, if we go back, you'll see that usually everything here, you just don't need any of that. So, you're going to hit A, and you're going to delete that. Then I'm going to press 3 on the numpad, which is going to give me a side-on view, which means the next thing I'm going to add in is going to add it on this perspective. I'm going to go Add, Image, Reference. Then I'm going to find my reference images, which, ooh, it's one of these. I believe it's this one. Yeah, good. All right, next thing we're going to do is... Find the wheelbase of this vehicle that we want to choose. If you don't, uh, if you're not working on a specific vehicle, you can pick out your own wheelbase and just uh, skip this particular section. We're going to go with 2.32 meters for the wheelbase. So the way I do this is add mesh cube, then change this down here to 2.32. Is that correct? Yes, because millimeters. You divide it by a thousand to get to a meters, so basically change the comma to a period is kind of a simple way of thinking of it. So 2.32, 2.32, hit enter. This is my wheelbase to front and back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one, I'm going to try to center it, and I'm just going to work this up by scaling it until both centers of the wheels are half cut off by this box. And there we go. Next thing I'm going to do is now I want to make sure that this is going to be on the ground plane. I'm going to go up here and, you know, I should be on the modeling tab. Anyway, oh, what's happening? There we go. Uh, make sure this one is selected so I can see through it. I'm going to select through. Otherwise, if I just try to do a selection like this and then move it, it's only going to move the ones that I selected. So if I go like this and select, I'm now moving all nodes and all behind. But what I want to do is not move this on its own. I want to hit N. I want to come up here and set the Z value to zero. That is now the ground plane. I press tab, go back, G and Z, and move it up and just have it kind of touching the bottom. Generally the way to do that. Welcome, sneaky Mr. Wiggles. How's it going? Uh, next is uh, creating multiples of these. So I'm going to go Shift D, rotate 9. I can see that this is going to go the wrong way, so negative T. And then I'm just going to drag that down. 
Now I have it from the top and the bottom. If I go like this now, uh, usually the top and sides are not always lined up. Uh, if I could show, yeah, you can see that this is a little bit over here, but it's not even touching here. So I'm just going to control Z that. I just wanted to show that these generally don't line up these blueprints when you find them. Well, this side profile is interesting. Okay. Uh, what I want to do now is generally make sure that this is one lined up in that axis, which it seems... That's the wrong thing. What's happening? G... Ah, okay. Just the wrong thing. Alright. So what I'm just doing there is I'm hitting G and that'll move it around. If I select an axis, of which you can see up here, Z is directly towards the camera, so that's up and down because I'm looking from the top. Uh, y is the length, X is the width. Generally, what you'll want to have is if you press 3, this to be the front. So this is uh, Y, I think actually technically negative? I don't remember. Anyway. Uh, also, another little tidbit of information is usually this thing is in perspective mode, but when you hit one of the numpad keys, which will change perspective, it'll put into what's called orthographic mode, but I can do orthographic mode on its own. So, just the image, I hit five, you can see that this is now not changing anything via perspective. That's just a little tidbit of information. A lot of people like to model entirely in this mode. I personally don't. But yeah, let's go here. We're gonna select this vertical one again. Shift D, rotate with R, nine, zero. Then I'm gonna move it along the Y axis. Oh wait, hold on, I forgot to put this one into the middle. So G and X to move it into the middle. And I'm gauging usually by the uh, badge that's on the front, along with the, low, uh, like the middle of the lowest pixels here. And that's about in the center. This, not in center. This actually almost looks like it's out of alignment. Let's bring this in a bit. Yeah, this is not a great image. Alright, let's rotate this a smidge. There, now let's move it along the x-axis again. And that looks a lot better. This line now doesn't look even either, but whatever this dot is, I'm assuming is in the middle. These side lines are pretty darn close, and this is pretty good here. We're going to be working in only on one side, and it's going to be mirrored, so it doesn't really matter if it's exactly in the center, just as close as possible. Welcome to the new people, Thomas. Oh, that's it. <laughs> the rest of you just other people. Uh, how you going? Left of the x-axis is usually negative yeah. This is the x-axis. There is no x-axis on the y-axis. Unless you mean going here. Uh, pressing 3 to go on the x-axis. But this is also the x-axis. And this is the left of the x-axis now. So, not really the perfect statement to make. Now we're going to bring the front along. GX... And we see now, if we put that in the middle, it's fairly okay with alignment, but it is clipping on the bottom. So we're going to move this up a little bit to about there. Okay. We now have all of our things lined up, but this doesn't need to be here, so we'll move that along that axis. So then this is all free in the middle for us to work on. Hit delete on that, and then we go 7, add, mesh, plane. Now we're going to start working on this. We're going to set this to X0, and then go Mirror. So I can't meddle with this one unless I change on, I think it's this? But I don't want to, I just want to work on this one. And whenever I'm using a node that's on the center line, I'm not going to hit just G, because I can try to get it as close as possible to staying in alignment. I'm going to hit G and Y whenever moving these nodes. So then it's going to always stay at zero. If I do accidentally move it off and I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, and I don't remember how many control Z's back it was, or if it's too many control Z's back, I can just go here to X, and that changes the uh, thing for the node. 
Man's embracing the blueprints? Yeah, I've always been embracing the uh, blueprints. Welcome, Luso Mihabosa. How's it going? Uh, we're going to turn this to wireframe mode for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the general shape of the front at first. And I usually stop it about the windshield. That's a good point for these sorts of vehicles. Somewhere around there. And then we can uh, change things as we need them to be. I'm going to go to this angle and we're going to start moving things up. And as you can see now, this is not in alignment with the windshield. So you're going to have to make your own decisions when it comes to these things. Welcome Groundhog, 120 degree V6. Yeah, I'm just going to go with a boxer on that one. Going here, I'm mostly here for porting paint. I'm pretty familiar with Blender. Uh, porting paint, you mean the paint colors? Uh, if you go to a Hard Roost Labs video, he's got one on here. Bound boxes update. I think it might be in this one. Fixture modding. It'll be in one of these like newer ones that has the Corvette in there that will have the new startup. Oh, here we go. Blender startup file, uh, that one. And the new startup file is a lot simpler. There's no longer bound boxes, and this has all your materials on it. They don't have a materials cube. Uh, cube. Instead, they've decided to name them all out in this sort of way. It's pretty simple stuff. It's got a whole bunch of other things in here that I don't really use. But uh, yeah, we'll bring this over, but we don't need that right now. Porting paint fill? Not paint? A porting part. Uh, okay. Sorry. My bad. Either way, that helped a lot of people out that just want to figure out that part. Go see Hydrosa Labs for uh, things which I will gloss over. Now, we're just going to try to get a general shape of this thing. And you don't want to start making triangles. This is still squares. I find that triangles, the way in which things are sent over to automation when we're doing our process this time, will cause shading issues. So we're just going to keep with what we got. Now we're going to go in and we're going to do subdivide service because we're starting to get there. You can see that this is now the shape that we got. And one thing I like to do is go with keep corners. And that'll help uh, create our shapes. So, that'll go to there. We may have to do this a whole bunch of different times. Sometimes you'll want to go with uh, increasing uh, weights on things. That is actually considerably lower than what it normally is. But either way, this will be changed over and over again. As you see, we've moved that one and now this one is a little too high. We go with more loop cuts. You can just select everything, press Alt-J. What does Alt-J do? So that's Control-J, Alt-J. Oh! Convert triangles to quads, okay. I used Control-T but previously, but yeah, don't do that no more. Uh, we're just gonna try to get things to fit in for the stuff. But yeah, I generally don't like to use triangles. Oh, I learned a new trick at least. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, hopefully that helps you. I love loop cut. Since I've started doing this process, loop cut, one of my most used tools. Now, we're just going to get the general shape still. And we're going to keep working on this. Just massaging it all into place. Now, there is better ways of doing these a lot of the time. But uh, this is the way I do it. Control T to triangle, then Alt J to turn into quads. Okay. Uh, we're going to keep working on this. We're still... Hmm. You know, I think... For cubing simplicity's sake, we're going to do that. Grab that vertice and extrude it out. And then... F on that, and we're going to create a face there. A 
No. It'll start looking better as we go on. If you want to shade things, you can just go shade smooth. But because I'm still modeling, I do like to keep it that way so I can kind of keep the shape a little bit easier in my mind. Then we're going to extrude down a little bit. And we're just going to keep massaging things. Uh, sometimes vertices will be hidden behind things as well. Get a little bit tricky, but you'll get there. I just mainly do models without subdivision mod. I generally like to do it. It keeps my process going well. I find this is a much cleaner way of doing things and I can pop a model out so much quicker this way. Then grab this, E, oh no, there's an extra vertice in there. E on the X axis, X zero, wait, what? S, X, zero, then move that to zero. All right, we've got our under tray for the most part. Maybe we'll lift these up a little bit. There, what do we got here? Oh, okay, we got a triangle. Our first triangle, boys, oh well. Oh, actually, what I will do, M and distance. Oh, I'm noticing that this is not showing up here. Shoot. Text color. Uh, ooh. Let's change that to red. For now, that'll do the job. Buttons will also make red. Actually, you know what? We'll make it green because later on we're going to have red paint on. Sorry about that. It works well without, for me, I make low poly models like a Toyota Serpa in 30 minutes. Um, I prefer much higher polys now. Much better uh, results. We need Civetta Cinema Porter. Maybe I'll do it after my exams. Go for it. I think they've done a terrible job with that uh tuning of that vehicle. It's so bad. Now we're going to try to get this front shape a little bit better. Just keep massaging things into place. Uh, the other thing that um does better with this is the way that automation does things. Uh, automation uses ray tracing with their parts when they're aligned on. If you don't have higher poly counts, what will happen is your model will be at an angle, and then once you go over that low poly curve, it'll go dunk, and then you'll get a completely different angle. It makes things a lot better for the people working on the car if it is a slightly higher, higher poly count. I generally have a three on the divisions of the way in which I do things. Do it, I need a scintilla thing in automation. All right. I mean, there's lots of problems with putting the scintilla body into automation as well, because there's holes and stuff, and there's extra planes for aerodynamic purposes. I could do it, but there's a lot of extra thought processes that will have to go into it. I made most of the model for an AZ-1 two hours ago. Nice. Hey Phil, just go back from my second to last... Just got back from your second to last exam. Ooh, that's good to hear. Getting into more chill mode, I'm assuming, as you're getting closer to calling it a day on your exam period. I'm gonna move these notes back a little bit. Alright, starting to get there on the shape. Now we can start doing the rest of the body. I'm not going to do the cutout right now, because I think that will be left to the automation people that want to put that there or not on this body. Uh, I may do a secondary version that will have it. If I want to hide poly, I subdivide it once and right click it and then select smooth. So the problem with doing it that way is the polys won't line up exactly to the shape. Uh, I also just realized this is not perfect to the shape either. 
Uh, ah, okay, the bottom isn't to the right shape either. So as you can see, like, the difference between what shape I've made and what shape it makes, modeling with this is a much better way of doing it. Is that a triangle? It is a triangle. Uh, at center. There we go. Fix that issue. Yeah, it's, it's better to work with a pipeline that has subdividing in from an early uh, point. Alright, now we got that. Now we're going to bring these down to match that. And got a little bit of a bow here, so from the set, there we go. Now this gets a little bit tricky. Uh, because we've got the normal vertices lines and then the vertices lines of the new shape. This, unless there's a different way of doing this, I find is uh, just something that comes with practice. You could also just go back to this mode if you wanted to. Is that? Okay, yeah, that one is inwards and that should be inwards. And then, back and forth. Is there a hotkey to change between this and then the last one selected? <laughs> Since you seem to know quite a bit. The stream isn't working for me. I'm a restart your laptop. I could, okay. Uh, they will align for me. Elites? Welcome Pro Gamer, how's it going? Uh, we're gonna bring these out just a smidge here. And as you can see here, the line up here doesn't line up, but if you go to this mode, you can see that it does. It's because just the way in which this whole process works. Take a little bit of practice, but once you get there, it'll be fine. There's a hotkey for viewport shading. I only press it randomly. <laughs> I know there is a button, but I keep forgetting it. Like, constantly keep forgetting it. I'm gonna line this one up a little bit better. Line this one up a little bit better. There we go. Oops, the daisies. Okay, we're all a little bit low now. Oh, but it lines up there, but it doesn't line up there. Nah. This is where you have to start using free thought. A little bit high, though. I don't like to use the front on too much of a reference. So you can see now it's a bit low. I find that it's just uh, easier to use the side profile for the majority of this. Alt S. Alt S. What have you done? Alt S. Nope. All right. Let's just keep bringing out the body now. I will eventually learn how to do wrapping. And that'll be in a different stream way down in the future. How's the side of that looking? It's looking a little bit flat on the side right now. Let's actually go have a look at a reference image. We're going to refresh this. So hopefully these images will come up. No, no they won't. Ferrari Dino. So, it's not a great image. A little bit bigger. It is a little bit flat on the side, yes. Now, this is also a different version, as you can see that it's got an open back end. Uh, ooh, that's almost not a terrible image. Uh, fairly flat. There is a seam line. We may put that in at some point. Can't see. That one's very rounded. That one's very different. So, you do have to pick which one you want to look at. 
I literally made a 39 km an hour car with 7 horsepower. Oh, not bad. Oh no, you don't have to figure out the keyboard shortcut for me, it's fine. Uh, I think what we're going to do... So we're just going to bring these in and up a little bit. It won't match up to the front on view, but these are made by people that are also probably not the most knowledgeable of uh, what they were. They're just making best guesses. Anyway, so... We'll use it generally as a general guide. Unfortunately, none of these are correct. There was actually three of these blueprints that I saw. Uh, and all of them were just a little bit different. So, what can you do? Is there a way to get lower? What, lower horsepower? Flood the engine, maybe? About there. And about there. This will go about here. Then we're going to start creating this little bit of a shark angle here. Uh, how are you with that? That does look fairly good. I think it's mostly flat on the rear. Yeah, you can see it gets very flat on the rear. Even on... Uh, this one looks like it would be flat on the rear if they didn't have what looks to be a bigger engine in the back there. Okay. Is this a replica? Like, the difference between these two... Oh, you, no, I forgot. This is the Aerospeed version. This doesn't have the shark note. Oh, yeah, I forgot. This is uh, the original, I believe. No, Speed and Automation? I don't know. Munt the Gears? Bloody hell, for man. So many streams. You on your grind? No, I just want to take a break from editing. So, doing this is a much uh, easier way of doing things. So, I could still put out content for people. They won't forget that I exist because I'm so small of a YouTube creator and that's a thing that'll happen. <laughs> um, this is just, yeah, easier. Let's go ahead now. Grab these two. E, X, S, X, zero. And then X, zero. So what we just did then is extruded along the E axis, scaled in the X axis to line up uh, to be flat. And then I told it to go to the uh, X, which is the middle line, so it'll mirror properly. Then we're going to bring that to there. M last. That'll go to the last one. Then we're going to go here and we're going to create another face. Then we're going to select all of these and put in a much harder crease. In fact, actually, we're going to go all the way up to one on the crease there. And that now gives us our lovely back end. I wish there was a version of a subdivision which only really focused more of the uh, sorry the um subdivisions on the corners of things. So on like these flat areas, you don't have like a whole bunch of polygons. So if we go get rid of optimal di display, you can see that the back end, even though relatively flat, still has the same amount of poly divisions as everything else. Just a bit of a irksome thing for me. All right, what are we doing? Let's get rid of optimal display, back into edit mode. And I see that our under tray here is still a little bit high. So we're gonna lift that up into place. I will leave the cutouts for the exhaust for the people in automation to do. We'll uh, do that later. If not the gears, the speed would be higher. Uh. Flood the engine, give it less horsepower so it'll go slower? I don't know. Lower RPM will help if you lower the RPM as much as possible. Uh, ooh. Yeah, we somehow... Now don't get the bottom of the vehicle. Oh, that's right, no. We're using the front for the bottom of the vehicle. Okay. Or front view, I should say. We're going to go with a slightly less flat underbody to kind of match more with the normal version. And there we have a big turd. 
uh, fairly basic. I almost want to cut this into two different models so then I can have a seam line here where they have a seam line. Can we see where this seam line is? I don't think we will be able to from uh, here. Let's see. Okay. Here. Is that? Ah. Is that what the rear end looks like? I don't think I've ever seen that before. Also, this is a 3D render, so not entirely accurate. Also, things look very weird here. I feel they've done something odd. Oh, man, that looks like a cool car to make. Might do that one day. Uh, here, can we see this is... Okay, I think what happens... We've got a top clamshell that comes all the way here and then cuts down around here. So... Oh, but this doesn't have a hood line. Others do have a hood line. This doesn't. Okay. So this one shows up very clearly. We got a top clamshell that comes all the way around here, down to about here, and then uh, this clamshell driver surround shroud will come off. And then these will be the fuel tanks in here. I know this is a toy model and not exactly the one we're going for, but it does exaggerate the things. Let's go in for you know, rear. Okay, here we go. That one shows it a little bit easier. This is a different version again. Can we please see the rear? That's not the one. God damn, where'd this image go? There's a lot of cool pictures in here. Uh, yeah, that's not exactly the same one. 246? Okay, yeah, that's not actually the vehicle we're looking for. Is there no picture of the rear of this vehicle? Really? Ugh. Alright, let's get rid of Dino and see if that helps. There we go. That's the image we want. And as I thought, yes, this is just open here, but this is even a different version again, as you can see by the uh, rear engine shroud sort of thing. Shift-Z. Shift-Z. Hey, look at that. Oh, and it goes between the last two selected. Nice, good. That's exactly what I wanted. All right, and here you can see that, yes, that body line does come down. It goes all the way up to here. Has the cutout for the suspension hole, and then uh, there is no seam line on the nose. It just goes underneath and has a thing there. So there's a big cutout around here. We're going to try to do that now for this. Uh, and as you can see, we've got one line here, and then the one line up here, which is for the beginning of the windshield. That doesn't really work for us. What we're going to do... move these back a little bit. Uh, do we bring this down? No. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go with loop cut. We're going to match this pretty close here, and then the rest we can move into place. Somewhere around there. And then we're going to cut from here out, but we don't have that seam line where we want it to be. So we're going to go... Actually, hold on. How do we do this? I have a better idea. I'm going to go in. I'm going to select these lines. Uh, where does it cut at the rear? Okay, so there's a cut line along here, and then the rear does a very similar sort of thing. You just got a new rival? What's your slowest... car? I don't know. I've never really bothered to do that. So the cut line goes right into the suspension. So I think about here will be fine. We can move this around later. Then we're going to right click because we're on edge select. We're going to right click and go edge split. How's that affected us? Yeah, as you can see, things are a little bit different now. Let's just go ahead. And you can see that, yeah, that's done that. So, what we can do is grab the nodes that we want for now. Good. Making sure that we're getting the right ones. You can see that this is illuminated this way, but not illuminated this way. That means that I've got the nodes, which are connected that way. I'm going to go here. 
and G Y. Okay, anyway. Maybe just G. No, we'll go G Y. Then we'll lift these up. So this one is the last one selected. We're going to hit period, active element, S Z. And that's going to scale us back up uh, in relation to this particular vertex. Then back to medium point. Now, this is a big problem. I wonder if I can go vertex crease. Mm, it's created a little bit of a crease itself. But you know what? There's actually a round kind of curve anyway, so it doesn't really need to be creased at all. And... Yeah, I think that'll do. Uh, what this will also allow us to do... We'll join this up later, but for now this is what we're going to do. Wait, is that still connected there? No, it's not. Okay. Going to select all of these... Is that... Oh, I thought that was edge split. Okay. Let's go in. Edge split these around here, probably. Now... There we go. Got those selected. We're going to just tuck that in a little bit. G, X. Is that actually how I want to do this? You know what? A, M, by distance. We're going to reconnect those, I think, and just do this an easy way. So we're going to select all of these. We're going to go to bevel. Create a little bit of a thing along here. Alt, select along the line that I want. Not that one. Then we're just going to... Oh, okay, that's doing a weird thing there. Is that not that good? Uh, G, X. Gonna move us in a little bit. And then, crease. Then we've got these. And crease again. Uh, this is now creating a weird bit of a line, so we're gonna increase that crease a little bit. And then we're gonna lift up these, to make it look as if they're tucked in a little bit. <coughs> oh. Sorry about that. Now you can see we've got a little bit of a crease line along here, which I think does what we want it to do. we got some weird extra vertices in here now. How do I want to do that? Um... Maybe we'll just put another loop cut in here. Oh, loop cut doesn't want to go all the way across? Bugger. That's fine. We'll just do one loop cut. Make it a little bit easier than knife. Then, I'm going to move that to there. And that to there. And we're just going to turn up that crease line again. Good. Now we got the crease line that we want. Made a car that goes 535 kilometers an hour? Oh yeah, I'm planning to do something on that at some point, aren't I? You made a six second hatchback? Nice. Slightly modded though? <laughs> okay then. Now I got 3.1 horsepower engine. Okay. Let me try to make less horsepower. You can always make less horsepower. You can make basically none. Is Phil sick? No, I just got a bit of a scratchy, tickly throat and nose. Mr. Phil Man, I greet you and hope everything is great in your life. Thank you for your funny and educational videos. And as a Ferrari technology spy, I ask you, sir, when to expect the F40 LM body? Probably never. Hair puff noob? Nob? What? What are we talking about now? You guys getting rude with each other? Uh, now... We want to create a cut line here, which... Wait, that goes at quite the curve. Does that happen on... Oh, it does go at a curve. Okay, interesting. Do we get that on all of them? There is a curve. Okay. That shouldn't be too hard. I think... Move this up here. Uh, 
And we'll go that bevel option again. Do we want that one? I don't think we want that one for now. Bevel. Then we increase. That was a bad choice because it's got these inside lines as well, and we don't want them selected. Now the mean crease. And that gives us the much easier crease that we want. Probably want to create a subdivision down the middle of it, or a... Not a subdivision, but another thing. I think what we're just going to do is cheat. Does this look fairly... F it does look fairly flush. That's fine, whatever. We're just going to grab these. No, grab this one. GZ. And... GX. So that gives us the crease line that we want anyway. I don't really see what's happening here. Okay, we got these vertices in here. What I've just done then is I click this thing, which turns off the display of the thing. So I can always just go back to this view if I want it to be here. Uh, these extra lines that I put in here as well are probably messing with the shape of the body a little bit. Yeah, as you can see, this has gone a little bit flat now. So let's go ahead and fix those. Leads more, uh, leads? leads more weight to the vertices around it. There we go. Okay. Coming along now, you can see that we've got a fairly good shape. I might actually... No, you know what we'll do? We'll leave this until we've applied the subdivision and then do the next step on uh, putting the crease line in there. Welcome, Mr. Frogger. I think it's one of the 535 kilometer an hour car. Okay. How's it going, Art of the Boy? If I didn't say hello to you yet. Um... I think we want to create a cut line along here, so then we can have the cutout for the suspension. Is that a good space for it? Yeah, that looks fairly good. Uh, can we go back to that? That is pretty much a straight up and down line. I know it's got this little bit of a bump in there, but if somebody wants to do that, they can use the cutout patchwork to make that fit even better. Oh, you know what we can do? Make life even easier. We're going to go loop cut, bring that to about here. Uh, S, X, no, S, Y, zero. Then when it comes to painting these, you know what, actually, we can bring in the paints now. Let's bring out that startup level again. Let me get bound levels as well, may as well. Control C on that, exit, don't save. In here, control V, H, this gets... Paint. Uh, then we go to face select. I'm gonna grab these, and this is gonna be called lip placement. Now, in automation, lip placement is invisible. What's gonna happen is you can still place things over here with fixtures. So that's how we're gonna do that one. And I think I'm gonna undo this mistake. Oh, but I do like this curve. You know what? We might wait until we apply the subdivision thing before we put that back in. There's a bit of a crease line here. What is that? Does that show up? No, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, okay. There's a bit of a weird crease here. Hmm. And let's grab a loop cut. That's not the right thing. And then... Oh, you know what? Actually, we'll grab these. GX. Oh, that's way over. Okay. What the hell? How did I manage to make that come out much further? That's weird. Let's just line these back up.
Hmm. You know what? Let's undo that. Yeah. Alright, we are going to add these faces back in. I'm going to do it this way for now. So we can minimize triangles. Uh, and yeah, it's got its general own curve. That's done some weird things. Do we want to add this one in? I think we do. And then, yeah, it's got a curve line along there, which we can use anyway. Uh, I think that'll do on that one. To be frank, I would change my name. I would have to change your name. Wait, why would you change your name? This looks difficult to do. I've got all of the instructions and all of the uh, things are down here. In fact, actually, buttons that are clicked, we're going to change that to red. That way. There we go. Why do we... I don't see a left button click. What is that? Hmm. Weird. Anyway. This is looking good. Now... For now, we're going to apply... That was the wrong thing. This lip material. Hey, look at that. It actually comes up with the line that we want anyway. Good. Alright. Done. Now we're going to cut out the area for the cockpit. Uh, generally do this in two steps. Do we... I think... What we'll do, I can't actually see what I'm doing, is maybe delete this face for now by getting rid of that. And, ooh, that's affected that drastically. Uh, we'll get to that later? Hold on, how do we... Hmm. Maybe what instead we'll do is we'll go loop cut... Yeah, a loop cut. Yeah, it's gone all the way around. That's unfortunate. Yeah, whatever it'll do. Uh, we're going to try to line that up with the side of the cockpit, which is about here for now. That has hardened our edge a lot as well. So we're going to go in. Move a lot of these. Don't need that selected. And then... Bring you back down. That has to come down a lot. We'll deal with the back later. Okay. How's the edge? It does bulge out a little bit. But it lines up fairly good with the top view, so that's fine. Yeah, as I say, don't use the front-on views very much. They generally tend to be a bit of a... Lie? Is probably a good word to use for that. now a lot wider than what it was before. What about the front extension? How far does that come out? I think way more than what it needs to. There we go. That's helped with that a lot. Oops. Good. Let's have a look at the nose again quickly. flat there, and then it does rake underneath quite a bit. Okay. There. Alright. 
be like ammo? What are we talking about in the chat right now? My strongest engine has 1444 horsepower. That's not a lot of horsepower. Now let's go in. I'm thinking instead of what I did previously, I'm gonna select the correct face, which is this one. And we're gonna go EZ. So now, I'm starting to create the cockpit. So I extruded it along the E axis, uh, sorry, Z axis. I'm gonna delete that edge. And apparently I didn't do this properly. So we're gonna go SX zero. So it's scaled to zero. And then we're gonna move it to the X axis zero. And we've got our cabin now. We're gonna move that further down. To about here. Then we're gonna move the front of it forwards. I just blindly selected then. I couldn't actually tell what it was if you were wondering what I just did. Then we're gonna turn this up to a hard crease. And now we have mostly the cockpit done. We probably want this line in here. Good, got that selected correctly to be fairly hard as well. Yeah. Probably move this line forward, GY. A little bit of back support. And you can do lots of different changes and however you want that done. Ferrari Roma look like? Ferrari Roma? Never heard of a Ferrari Roma before. Uh, Nothing like this. At all, really. I don't know how you got that. It's a boat? You know, it does look a little bit like a canoe. I will give you that. I was thinking that as I was modeling it. I just couldn't verbalize it. And you did a much better job of verbalizing it than I did. You're making 4,700 horsepower in a V10 right now? Cool. I think the records are like 13,000 horsepower, but that's because there's like inconsistencies in uh, the whole system. So let's go back to having a look at the rear view again. No, do we have... The back seems kind of smooth. Let's go look at the... What just happened? Whoops. Actually, you know what? We'll grab this one specifically for now. Ferrari cockpit. <laughs> Cock. Uh, you know what? No, that does seem like a very sharp, uh, a flat edge, but that may not be real. This one here does seem a little bit rounded. Hmm. Not great pictures, if I'm honest. Then there's, like, models, as you can see. There's a little bit of a curvature in there. But those are models, so you can't really tell exactly how accurate they are. Uh, open beta version is what I... Sorry, open alpha version is what I use. GY. So we're going to put a little bit of a curve in there for that rear seat line. And I see that we have a bit of a crease happening. I think I've made an oopsie. So let's go ahead, delete that vertice. Then I believe I've got the right one selected. We'll do that. And because this is only the cockpit, so I don't care if it's got triangles in it, we'll do that line. Then this line here is going to get a crease. And now we've got that happening. Eh, that's not great. Mm. We may delete this in the future and then create a much better crease line there after we've applied the subdivision uh, modifier. In the old version of automation, I think my highest power number was 4,800 horsepower. What is body in years? This? This is 1959 or 1961, I think. I've got it somewhere. Nineteen sixty one to nineteen sixty four for this body. How long did it take you to learn Blender? Ooh, you're going back a long time on that one. 
Uh, well, the, the thing is, is I knew Maya firsthand uh, from doing it at university. And going from Maya to Blender was more about just learning the controls and hotkeys more than anything else. I just noticed this does have a bit more of a curve here, so we're gonna... Try to match that curve line a little bit better. There we go. We're also gonna drop the bottom of this down so it's a little bit... rounded. Then, have I got the face line? Yeah, good, I do have that selected. I'm gonna create a little bit of an extra crease there. And then, yep, okay. Gotta be careful of that. That's not actually poking through right now, but we'll keep an eye on that just to make sure that that doesn't happen. Jesus. I hate this keyboard so much. Sometimes it just ignores my keystrokes. Um, okay. I'm just seeing if this matches, which I think the body to cockpit starts here. And on here, it's showing it's much higher as well. So I think I'm going to grab this, going to grab this. Actually, hold on. I can also have a look from the top view. Yeah, I think the top view is a little bit inaccurate. So we can... Oh, you know, not inaccurate, but messy to look at. i bring that over to here. There's so many lines happening right now. And then we might use the front view a little bit to bring that around. And that seems to line up a lot better now. How's everything else going? Now it's created like a big flatness. I'm just gonna grab that one right there. And this has now got different shapes in here. So we're gonna line these up. See, that happened because I started by doing it wrong. All my mistake. Front end is looking fine. This is looking a lot more enclosed now. Let's see if that lines up with what we see here. Yeah, as you can see, this does come up quite a bit before it goes into the cockpit. And on the sides here, yes, that is where they had the fuel tanks on either side. Absolutely. Terrible idea. Oh my god. Oh, that, that's the wrong one. I'm gonna go to that one. I don't know the V16 DLC. Alright, fair enough. Uh, Alright, we've got a bit of a flatness coming towards the back now we can bring this in. So I'm going to select this vertice last whilst holding shift. I'm going to go make sure that that is active, SX, and that's going to scale inwards towards that. Now, this isn't going to be perfect, but what it does do is move all the nodes uniformly towards the rear. And we've got a weird shape line along here because there's a crease here and a crease here. This is going to create that to be very flat along there. What are we... Oh, even this is a little bit wide. So let's bring that in. Even this is a bit wide. Let's bring that in. How's that look? It's looking okay. We've got a weird bit of a... It's hard to show that. But you can see here that it comes out. Hmm. Hmm. Is it because of that? Why is this overlapping now? This is one of the things that I will get better at at time, but for some reason this is... You know why? I think it doesn't have this cut line along here. Let's add that cut line in. We're going to go with knife tool, select that, and just go over all of them. And hit it about there. That has helped us a lot with our line. The body doesn't do that thing quite so badly. 
we'll deal with a little bit more of that later on. Let's go loop cut. Put a loop somewhere around here. Make sure that is the last one selected. SX. And then up. And that's given us a much better shape now. Is that meant to be quite square? Wait. Oh, okay. I stuffed up. There we go. Fix that. Uh, is that meant to be quite so square? Let's have a look to see what the other back end was on this. You know, it was actually kind of square. God damn it. I hate Pinterest. Pinterest is so annoying. So along the top, it's fairly flat. Here it's quite rounded, and the bottom it gets a little bit flat again. So we don't want nearly as much as a sharp edge, and what the heck is happening here? I think that might be why we are having our issue. That weird body shape. Still having a little bit of an issue. Hey, there we go. For some reason, these are inverted. I don't know how that happened. So I've set it back to normal scaling mode. I'm going to go SX and I'm just going to scale that until that inverts. Does that match the rest of them? Yeah, it does. And that's helped us a little bit. We've still got a little bit of a line in here. So we're going to go 1 to look at the front, and 9 to flip it around. Turn those invisible. I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. Get these nicer contour lines. And, you know what, no, we can leave that one. GX. So now we've got a little bit more of a curve going on here now. Uh, I think we'll bring the bottom in a little bit more. So what I'm doing is I'm hitting 1 to go to the front view, and because I want to see the other side, it'll I'll press 9 and it'll rotate it around for me. These are not in alignment either. There we go. There we go. It's coming along. Got a little bit of line issues here. Yeah, as you can see that. Cool. Mm, still a little bit of a hard line, but it's doing much better now. style car can do 419 kilometers an hour around the slingshot and 425 up to uh, Bavarian Bend. Um, make sure you're within the power limitations. I can't remember how much power or maybe they got like a fuel mileage limitation. It's been a while since I looked at it. Hi, I just entered the stream. Have I lost a lot of important things? Uh, you're probably going to want to watch from the beginning because we've done the overwhelming majority of the vehicles so far. Nice music selection? Eh, I just grabbed it off of, um, YouTube Audio Library. This is how I have my music. I just got it here, set it to attribution not required so I don't have to, like, attribute every single time. I've chosen a mood of calm. That way people know that this is not a hyperactive stream or anything. This is just a tutorial. 
it's meant to be a calm stream. If you're looking for high excitement, that probably won't come for quite a while until I'm actually completely finished here. Now, let's go back to having a look at the rear. We've got a little bit of a fold lip. So what I think we're going to do is select all of these faces. Uh, I wonder if I can do it this way. Probably not. Let me go inset faces. No, that doesn't work. Okay. Uh, inset faces now. There we go. That does what we kind of wanted to do. Then. How do I do this? Let's just start moving things across. Uh, then what we're going to want to do is take this, subdivide, take this, subdivide, get this, move it to X0, grab this, go there, M last. Grab this, send it to the X value 0, and get this to join there, M last. Now, this is all just one sort of thing, grab this and extrude along the y-axis. Then we can grab these two vertices because that's all we need to get rid of. And hey presto, we now have an invisible back end that you can still place things on if you so choose to. Let's turn this back on. Look at it, there you go. That's looking fairly good. Uh, this ridge line though is a little bit too harsh. That's the wrong thing. Uh, ooh, how hot? That is a lot softer than full. So we'll just turn that down just a notch. And I'm holding Alt Select, which will select along the uh, line of the thing. How much less do we want that to be? Yeah, good. Okay, that looks like a proper lip now, but the lip doesn't go very far in, so we're going to go back and move these back out. This is going to take a little bit of imagination, but that should do it. When an automation seeing inside the lip is going to be impossible. You can't really do it. So, I think that's all good. Uh, as for these, that's all good. This is now pretty much done for automation, uh, in terms of modeling. Sometimes you feel like you're only the person in the chat. Uh, we don't need to have a high chat volume today. We're only just doing this uh, for tutorial purposes. If anybody wants to learn how it is that I make bodies at the moment. There's a little bit of a hump happening here. Let me go back to the side, turn these back on. Uh, and have a look. Okay, yeah, that's too high. And that's too high, but only a little bit. Uh, this, a little bit too high. And this. Wait, hold on. No, that was actually right. Everything else is a little bit off. A little bit of a flat line along here. So we're also gonna grab these. Good, that's got that one. Turn this one off again. It just takes a little bit of work to massage these things into place. Think of it more of working with clay than anything else. Also, it does matter in which order you have mirror and subdivision. It's a little bit of a crease line, and that still does pop out a little bit. Hmm. Let me turn this one down. Okay, you yeah, know that doesn't work. Alright. 
This one we're going to have to work on again. The windshield will do separately. All of the other accoutrements like little bumps, rivets, crease lines like these ones can be put in easily. Uh, this can be put in easily. They can cut out the engine area easily on their own as well. So I think this is done. Also, the um, cut in area here. Welcome Space Warrior. I mostly watch streams like this to relax. Yeah, this is meant to be a fairly relaxing stream. Nothing too particular hype. I think we're good. Am I missing anything? Let's see. This one has actually got a very smooth edge around here for the suspension as well. So the other one that we were showing before, that had a very sharp jump around where the suspension was, yeah, very different. This one also has like a bump around the suspension, which is not in all of them as well. It's all just... Yeah, that one doesn't look like it has a bump at all. But I almost feel as if this body is a replica. I can't really tell. Yeah, no bump here. This one has a bump around the suspension. All of these weird different variations, you been, been generally just have to uh, try to pick ones that seem to be the same. That's if you're doing the uh, same sort of stuff. Oh, hey, look at that. It shows the clamshells divided up. Interesting. This one is of the sort that has the big harsh bump around here, around the suspension component. Uh, it's also for a toy model, not a real thing. Alright. And also one of the other reasons why I didn't fill in the, uh, sorry, delete the back end is so then if they wanted to they could uh, apply a mesh like this. Or they could even have the exhaust pop out there if they don't want to place the exhaust three-dimensionally. To be honest, it sure is sad that not a lot of people watch channels like this. Because this ain't actually so bad after all. Plus it has some benefits in the future like tutorials like this. Yeah, this is uh, the sort of thing that I'll share with a lot of other people. What else we've got going on here? Oh, a prototype model. That is a very smooth edge here. It does snake around a little bit. Hmm. Oh, and this one is even different on the nose part of the thing. Oh, I've seen on some of them that this is actually just completely cut away. But once again, you can put this in in automation, so that's not the goal of this. I do want to make a car solely for Beam and G one day. So I will go into like the full details one day. But not right now. Is that the Porsche? Yeah, that's the Porsche whatever Porsche that was. The really weird one. I made the model of that one as well. That one was low poly. Uh, let's do a bit of a poly count now, actually, that we got that. Statistics. We currently have 26,000 triangles. Oh, goodness. Uh, we're going to leave the roll bar to also do an automation, even though that is a very weird looking roll bar. Is that what it is in real life as well? Oh, it is. Hmm, okay, we might make the roll bar in automation and make it paintable so then they can get rid of it later on. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to turn that one back on for the back end. Add mesh. Cylinder. We don't need this to be high poly because it'll be smooth shaded anyway. I'm going to go with 32, 16. We'd probably even go less than that. We'll probably even drop it down to 6, maybe? We'll go 12. 12 will do. Now, one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to scale in this mode because that'll cause issues in the future. Whenever you want to scale something, generally try to do it in edit mode. If you do end up accidentally scaling something, you'll notice here that things have changed, but if you don't want to revert it to the way it was, you'll eventually go here, apply all transforms uh, but we're not gonna do that we're gonna do it right from the beginning and we're gonna try to grab a general shape of this thing sorry thickness even thinner that reckons no it looks thicker in real life so let's expand that out a little bit Cool, okay. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is delete 
the face. So there's no internal faces. No, that's the wrong one. Face. Okay. Then I'm gonna grab this. Uh, X to zero. Then we can apply mirror. Now the reason why I do X to zero before mirror is if I don't, things will be overlapping and we'll be creating duplicates. So we don't want to do that. We're just gonna have that there. And we're gonna create this on the 2D plane first. This doesn't really matter too much, I suppose. Uh, let's also go. No, we we don't care to do that. It's gonna bring this down. There is other ways of doing this, like uh, creating paths and stuff. And I probably should have done that, but I've already committed to doing this. Uh, does that, yeah, it curves back down again, but still kind of just disappears under the body. So we're going to try to keep it inside of here. How does that go in? You know, that's pretty good. Okay. Nope, that's the wrong one. Did I... Okay, so what I did then is I hit E and hit exit, which uh, exited the extrusion, which E does. Uh, but you can see that these lines here are not gone up, which means that I have actually indeed created extra nodes. And I just don't want extra vertices, so I'm going to control Z until I can see that everything is selected and it's all in one piece. Okay, good. So A. Oh, sorry. Bit of a burp there. A. G. Oops. Y. Grab that there, rotate that that way. Oh, does it also go upwards a little bit, does it? There it shows there's a little bit of a little, uh, change in dimension there. Same here. All right, so we'll do this. I will grab this. Make sure that's active element, so it'll rotate everything around that point. And get rid of that one. Make sure that is the last selected element. Rotate it again. Hmm, actually, maybe we do want that to rotate a little bit more there. Now, does it need to be the specific vertice that I'm choosing to do this with? No, it doesn't. Now we've got that, right click, shade smooth. Hmm. That doesn't look that great. You can actually tell the amount of things in there. So we are gonna go, probably should have chosen a lower poly, probably could have chosen six. We'll go with subdivide surface. Just one will do. That does increase the poly count considerably, but it'll do. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this one going to make sure that that hides entirely within the body. What do we got? Good. Okay, that does hide inside there now. Actually, hold on. Let's see if we can see the cockpit. Oh, that was a problem last time, wasn't it? Uh... This even shows it going not even into the cockpit, but this is a 3D render, so it's not the real thing. And they're all different anyway. Damn it. There's no good cockpit pictures. This is not quite exactly the same version we're using. Oh, and it's moving with the mouse as well. Yeah, it does actually go into a, eh, whatever. This is the point where I'm going to say, you know what, good and near enough is good enough. So we're going to quickly go ahead and... Wait, which one do I apply first? Is it mirror first? Yeah. Then I'm going to apply that one. Because this one is not particularly important. Oh, yeah, you know what? No, no, we will leave that there. Uh, we're going to now duplicate this. Shift D, we'll create a duplicate. Hide the original. We're just going to actually rename that. Body... V1. I'm going to hide that. This is going to be body 
v2. You know what, actually, we should be using underscores. Uh, sometimes game engines and codes and all that sort of stuff don't like uh, spaces, so we're going to use underscores. First thing, we're going to go in and uh, UV editing. This is where it becomes a pain in the butt. All other games, absolutely fine. Automation sucks ass. I really hate this. Ask uh, Groundhog if they're in the chat how much they hate doing this section of the thing. Welcome, Max Buzz. How's it going? You're 100% right. Almost all of the things I know in Automation BMG Blender, I learned here. Okay, thank you. Uh, how, how, glad to be of help. When I started to make stuff in Automation, I was mostly on my own. Okay, well, we do create a bit of a community here. If you do join the Automation, we've got the Automation communities here, which people talk. BMNG stuff as well, where people share their things. But if you specifically need something fixed, we've also got that section there. Cars you need fixed. Now... Uh, let's go. UV. Unwrap. And I think this is... Oh, you know what, actually. We should also go in and create a um, seam line. Do that right? Good. Yeah, I just want to go that halfway up there. But I, you generally don't want to have a seam line. Go all the way up here. Now what we're going to do is go in here and mark seam. Then when we go to unwrap again... Oh, wait. Hold on. I didn't need to do that. Anyway. <laughs> that was dumb of me. Let's go to this view here. You see that we got all of the stuff that's clean around here. Good. Uh, which ones do we want? Weird. Oh, hold on, I've got it on the wrong selector. Okay, good. Okay, good. We want this around here to be on the seam line. So we're going to move these things into the seam line for now. Uh... SX0, we'll fix this up later. For now, we're just getting things lined up. SX0, along with these. Remember, if you need to go back and look at things individually, you can uh, control YouTube with full stop and comma, and those will move frame by frame. We don't care if any of this stuff is crossing over at the moment. And we want this to go... I think the best way to do this is halfway down here. I'm going to drag this out. Rotate. That's a little bit. SX0. Okay. Now we can grab all of this. Sorry. I just don't like to have this selected. Uh, SX0... That was weird. S, X, zero. Okay. And then we're going to go pin, then UV unwrap. And now we've got it unwrapping along the main seam line and bulging out from there. We're going to go select all on that. We're going to rotate this 90 degrees because this needs to be along the zero axis. And now we can scale this in until it fits inside. Good. Then we're going to select these pin nodes again. Not selecting other nodes along with it. N, make sure this is on Y exactly 0 0.5. Um, and we can clean things out from here however we want it. But as long as these pinned nodes Stay where they are. Huh, weird. Um, S, X. Now we've got that a little bit cleaner. Let's try unwrapping again. 
Alright, you know what? That just doesn't want to do what I want it to do. So we're just going to grab these. GY, X, sorry. Uh, you know what? Let's grab these. Nope. Not those. Uh, bring those down. Rotate. And rotate. Rotate one last time. Good. Okay. This is now uh, UV and unwrap as it stands. This is body V2. Because this is a clean unwrap, I'm just going to go ahead. We're going to duplicate that again. Because we're going to do another big step now. The next big step is we're going to apply the mirror. Then we're going to apply the subdivide on everything. Now, if you're noticing that this is also completely flat, what you can do is just go shade smooth on the selection. But uh, we'll do that later. We don't want that quite yet. Now, back in here, you can see that... Oh, okay. We've got a lot of pinned nodes. Um, you know what? That doesn't really matter anymore. What we're going to do... Is hide these so I can see what I'm looking at. And we're going to go to wire mesh frame mode and we're going to select everything down here, including the center line. But nothing else on the other side. Wait, do we need the center line? I th yeah, I think we do. Be very careful to not select anything we don't want. Gotta hate un UV unwrapping. Luckily, this is an easy body, though. Now that we got this... What the hell? Oh, weird things are happening. Alright, uh, this... S... Y... Minus... One. And then... Because I don't know how to get this to scale relative to extra nodes and all that sort of stuff... Uh, unless I... Hold on. Let's try something out. Select one of these. As the last selection. Uh, individual origins. S, Y, minus one. No. That doesn't do it. What else we got here? 2D cursor. Tool. View. 2D cursor. Y. 0.5. Yes! Okay. Now we can go via the 2D cursor. So S, Y, minus 1. Perfectamundo! Now when we select everything, you've got a perfectly mirrored thing. I want to tell you... When I found this out, it was a goddamn miracle. That made life so easy. And also just finding out this 2D cursor thing as well. Doing things in order is very important. Uh, yeah. And you can see we select this side, we got that. We select this side, we got that side. Select both, and it goes all the way across. You can see we now have it all perfectly mirrored. Oh my god. Usually doing this the way that I used to do it is a pain in the butt. But it works now. Usually... UV unwrap, do everything before you apply your mirror. That is key. Let's go back to regular. Uh, welcome, Beanbreaker. How's it going? You don't even need to ask that question. I would gladly give UV mapping a thousand BeamNG cars over one automation body. <laughs> uh, I actually have a question. I'm making a McCarran MP4-6 body, but there are two long lines, kind of like dents, sticking out of the body, and I have no idea how to fix it can help. You'd have to put that in a picture in Discord, otherwise I won't be able to see it. You know what? Right now, put it in car files you need fixed, and I'll have a quick look. After looking at some other people... What? What are we talking about? Wait, to what games can you export cars from automation? Just to BeamNG at the moment. After looking at some other people's attempts at bodies, I don't give modeling advice on how to fix models. Too much effort. Yes, I generally agree with that. Um, ah, yes, I was developing a similar method and having issues. 
now that I know this will fix a few issues I was having. Yes. Always apply the mirror after you've done the UV unwrapping. I suppose you could just select half the body, do the same process. No, 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 you do need it to be mirrored first. Yeah, nah. So do the mirroring first, because the mirror will put the nodes directly over where they were, and they will end up this way perfectly centered. Um, before you do the mirroring and everything, if you need to do any fix-ups on the meshes, you do that first. Okay, you're posting it right now? I don't see it right now. Yeah, let's have a quick look. Make sure that all of this is good. I probably should have made sure this is all good before I exported it over. I almost want to go into these nodes here and just like remove a whole bunch of them. Because you really don't need that many on these weird crease lines. Oh no! It has overlapped and done weird things. Alright, so let's undo... Back to the mirror part. Okay, you know what? Screw this one. Uh, delete that. We've got version 2. Shift D. V. 3. So I got ahead of myself. Uh, apply mirror. Oh, no, I can't be in edit mode to do that. Apply mirror. Apply subdivide. Then we're going to go in. We're going to fix these. S. Y. No, that's to the 3D cursor. Median point. S. Y. There we go. Getting it to wrap around the right way. Because, yeah, these overlaps in automation cause a big problem. Wait, have I applied? Oh, damn it. Oh, no, no, it doesn't matter. Also, what you don't want is these shaded bits. That means you got overlap again anyway. Uh, we're going to just drag that back as well. What on earth is this jumble of things? Goodness gracious. Uh, we're just... Oh my goodness. Blender, not the perfect program. But I think you all know that. It doesn't ever do exactly what I want it to do. Just using a whole bunch of hotkeys, you get the general idea of what I'm doing, hopefully. Oh no. This is now starting to reach the other end, hopefully. Is that correct? What have we got here? Can't even see it. This is a mess. Wait, what? What the hell? What is even going on here? Oh, you know what? It's mirrored. I forgot about that. Uh, you know what? Screw it. Delete. Body. Sh can I shift D while it's invisible? No, I can't. V3. Um, you know what? Let's double check. Oh, you know what? It's creased at this section. Alright, we can make this much easier. There we go. Fixed. Uh, that's where all of these things are going weird and wacky. There we go. Look at it. Am I magic or what? That's actually not good. What is that? Uh... Ah, there's two nodes here that are not selected uh, at the same place. Sorry. Distance. How are these not the same thing? That'll do. Uh, make sure that these are all correct. As you can see, this does become a bit of a pain in the butt. Welcome, Swartkin. Hey Phil, I am the maker of the NASCAR Gen 7 body. 
Do you know how to make shape keys? Yes, I do. Shape keys are real annoying. Uh, I would suggest... Oh, God, I hate that. Ah! Going to Hard Rooster Lab's video, he does have a thing on shape keys. Am I going to do a shape key in this one? Probably not. I'm still only vaguely uh, initiated on shape keys, and I would have to like watch the video in my video to know how to do it. So that would become a bit of a copyright sort of issue, and I don't particularly <laughs> want to do that. Um, I can research and figure it out myself one day and run you through it. But as, as it stands, I don't remember it off by heart. Uh, I personally would stay away from shape keys. In Moye's stream once, he go to PE and the stream lost 500 people. Goodness gracious, how many people did he have viewing in the first place? I know how to make shape keys, but not make it work in automation. Oh, okay. Well, if you've made the shape keys, when you go over through um, the SDK, it just does it automatically. It should just apply in uh, by itself for automation. 1600. Wow, 500 people. That's a big oof. Alright, now that we've got that cleared up, we have to be in... So, you can't apply this in edit mode. You do have to be in thinking of a job, thinking about what mode. Okay, let's go ahead and do the halfway selection point again. Good. Oops, it is. Don't know why, but for some reason, Blender, when you're going over the uh, edge of the screen where it should loop around, it bugs out on me, and I don't know why that is. There we go. Okay. A. Make sure that this is to go via 2D cursor. S, Y, minus 1. That goes S for scale, Y for the axis, and... Minus one for the value, so it'll rotate it that way. And because we got this set to go via the 2D cursor, which is set here through this, it perfectly goes across for us. Hey presto, now all of these lines are the right way around. They're a little bit off angle, but that doesn't actually matter, really. It'll cause a little bit of an issue, but not really anything that most people will ever bother to notice. Uh, what else we got? Moye is doing really well, though. Moye has hinted in the past that he would be open to doing our group collabs that we do for automation at some point. So we'll see how that goes. I do have something else in mind for him as well. But, uh, yeah. Oh, it. Alright. Now we've got that all done. We'll do the loop in a minute. We don't need that right now. This is all looking fairly good. We can select it. We can smooth it. This is working. Are we out of music on this list? Okay, next list. Welcome, Dan Koopmans. Let's go in and select paints. Uh, we're going to go in here. Uh, select that. And select this. This is really cool music. I do agree that this is pretty fun music. Uh, this is going to get a trim. Paintwork. A sign. Uh, oh, maybe I could make that unbody. Who knows? Whatever. I think that'll do. Now, because of shade smoothing, it creates weird sort of artifacts. But now that I've applied the mirror, I've applied all the subdivision and whatnot, 
Now we're going to go in. I'm going to select these edges, which are meant to be hard and not shaded smooth. And we're going to edge split them all. Now, there is another way of doing this. Is it normal? Yeah, auto smoothing. So we can change auto smoothing, but I find that has issues. So we're not going to do that. We are just going to use uh, edge splitting. Uh, in other programs, it may work, but automation chucks a hissy fit. We're also going to select this line. We... Oh wait, I just recently learned a new thing. If I hit... Yeah, alright, that's moved the camera for me now. Uh, let's go ahead, select that one. And we're using Alt Select, which selects along the basically line that you've got selected. And then we're going to go... Uh, edge Split again. My brain is failing me, isn't it? Then we're going to repeat the same on this side because it's no longer mirrored. And we have to do this all manually. Is that... No, that's not selected. Edge Split. Okay. Uh, I kind of want to fix this up as well. I think... I have an idea for what I want to do. And this is going to take a little bit of time, but we're going to go to all of these. M, center, on, all of these. And we're going to go all the way around. Aren't you guys excited by this? Woo! M, center. M, center. Yay. M, center. Center. Just keep doing all of that. So M, what M does is go with a merge. So I can merge at center, I can merge at the 3D cursor. I don't know what collapse does, and by distance means if they're really close and you can adjust that manually on how much of a closeness you want them to be. There probably is other ways of doing this, but because I don't want to be researching things in the middle of a stream, <laughs> we're just going to go with this. We don't need the roll bar at the moment. And then... Ooh, okay. What we've done here was we selected these vertices, but... Those vertices are on the other side of this edge split, which means that these vertices are not the same. But what we can do is hit H, which will hide those. Then, when we can get a clean selection here and nothing else got selected behind it, we can uh, bring those to the middle. Then we can hide that. Oh, wait, Alt H that. Uh, go ahead, hide that. Then for these ones, because I know that this is a exactly flat edge, this is all fine to do. We go M, center, and Alt H unhides everything, and we can move those two together if we want to. They're not the same vertice, but we can move them together. <sighs> now to repeat the process on this side. M, center. H. This is not my sort of music. Let's go ahead, skip that one. Good. Hey Ruben, gonna watch this for tips on cars that I model one day? Yeah, maybe. Welcome Ruben, by the way. If anybody doesn't know, Ruben is also another small automation YouTuber like myself. My friend keeps playing Hearts of Iron 4 all day, every day. I mean, sometimes people just really like a game. Uh, just to also let other people know, what you can do, uh, which I wouldn't suggest, is you can go S0, and that looks like you've done exactly the same thing, right? Well, not quite. If we select here... Oh, no. Got, got that. Oh, no, got that one. G no, okay, we've got that one there. See... All you've done is just move the vertices on top of each other. So just M at center, and now we select there, we've got all of them in one go. Just wanted to make sure that if you're thinking that it's exactly the same as scaling to zero, it is not. 
Oops. Uh, how it would work if you had to UV unwrap an invisible side lip. I saw an old tutorial that can merge the vertices of the lip with the vertices on the side of the car, <coughs> but it didn't work for you. Um, if you're doing a lip, it doesn't really matter. You could just extrude out your lip wherever you want the seam lip to be, and then when you get into automation, those lips will just be hidden invisibly on top of each other. Um, if you wanted to do something more complicated where you actually wanted it to be out, but you wanted it to be mirrored, now that I've applied the mirror and then the subdivide in order, what I can do now is go in and delete half the body, except not including the center line. You do not want to have that selected. Do all your changes, do the mirror modifier again and apply again, and then do the reverse flippy of this again. Uh, what are we doing? That's right, we're doing this. Um, I would, yeah, then do all my editing on the UV and everything and just get that all however that is to be. You know, we don't need to be in the UV editing anymore. So we're not doing that right now. M center. Uh, we are going to be using a little bit of invisible lips. In fact, actually, we've already used invisible lips. Do the invisible lips first. Uh, invisible lips are these... Oh... Did I do that wrong? Ah, oh, damn it. Select. Uh, deselect this. Okay, these are invisible lips. I accidentally did a stuff up. And it's called lip placement assign. Now, lip placement will show up invisible in automation. But it's actually here, so you can place things over it. I feel that this is one of the most important things I learned that is not really made clear in the automation tutorials. And it's her? Sorry. Uh, how would it work if you had to... Uh, but it didn't work for me. Anyway, hopefully that is done. Uh, sorry, helped you out. If you wanted to have like a lip line, say, along here... Oh, that's actually selected the whole thing. Like this? Basically, what you would do is E, Z, then uh, I'd go Control Plus just to easily select everything. Assign that as a lip, and there you've done your lip. I know this looks really ugly, but that's just because I rushed this out of the door. Now, that lip is hidden. You can see that it's all flat. It doesn't really matter how it goes on here, uh, because this is all uh, invisible anyway. So if they put something down here, it's going to cut all perfectly, uh, and that could be a problem, but you can't see it, so that's not an issue. So we're going to undo all of that. Is that good? Yeah, that's all good. That's how I would do the uh, lip placements. I just thought I would explain it in a different way as well. Are we back to more country music? What is this? That's more country music. There we go. Rock music? Sure. That's calm. Oh, uh, you know what? I don't know how I did this mirrored. We'll go with this for now. M center. Nine. Yep, that's actually where I ended it as well. Okay. Now we've uh, pressed W to have a different selection mode. Now, has this selected anything it, I don't want it to? No, we're doing well. Okay. Uh, GZ. Make sure that this is on median point. Uh, actually, you know what? We are going to set that back to active element. Whoops. SZ. So I'm trying to just get this to all work nicely. Good. And then... Uh, ooh, I want these to stay the same. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this via math.
good. So, S, oops, S, X, minus point one? No, that's not minus, sorry, my bad. Let's do that again. S, X, point nine. Point nine nine? No, point nine five? Good, I think that'll do. So now that we know that that's 0.95, we're gonna go back to this here. Make sure, actually that doesn't matter. Um, then SX.95, that was the wrong thing. SX.95. Okay, good. Got a little bit of a crease line in there now. Not really showing up as much as I would have liked though. So what we can do is go back in and do good old edge split. Except that's edge splitted there too. That's some weird things. Let's go ahead and deselect these things. Uh, and then we can also select this one edge split and ugh, it looks ugly but it'll do this is the point where I'm like getting tired with the project and don't want to do anything hard anymore <laughs> good wait we didn't edge split there on the other side so we'll clean that up edge split done wait why is that showing up there Oh, I stuffed up. That's why it looks weird. All right, we're gonna have to control Z this until we get back this scale. There we go, okay. That's what I did wrong. S, X, point nine, five. There we go. I was wondering why it looked different. And right, now we got to do all those edge splits again. Yay! Aren't you guys happy that I get to do more edge splitting? There we go. Ah, oh, crap. That's not how I do that. We're going to have to do that one. Do that one. Do you select these nodes? Select those nodes. Then go over to there. Select that. Edge split. There we go. That one's done. Select, select, deselect. Uh, and also, I don't do this part. I don't know why I'm not doing that part. I just feel as if that would be incorrect to do that. Then, edge split. Good enough, I suppose. Done. All right. Uh, I question that because you open the UV on the lips normally. I question that because you open the UV. I mean, you can do that. Just make sure that your... Um, in the mirror form, and then select your nodes. So, uh, let's say for instance, we've got our bit here, and we're gonna E that down. Uh, control plus. Then, actually, you know what? We don't want to control plus that. Why is that not showing up? Okay, well, if we go like that, we can get it shop. Then you can move that around, which will be all your bits. That's basically how I do that. So it'll go like, what, SX? No, SY, sorry. And then that would be stretched out. I necessarily wouldn't bother doing that. You don't really need to do it. Uh, I think... We're good. See, what you really want to do is avoid things being overlapped. Now, did somebody put something in here? Okay. I have this problem with my model where there are multiple lines across the whole body and I have no clue how to fix it. I tried making it smoother and even the whole thing again from scratch, but there's still not gone any help. Are those lines missing? Like, is that hollow there? If so, maybe fill in the gap? Uh, I'd have to actually probably get a better look at what you're doing. Also, 4x3 monitor, bruh. Bruh. This is a weird one. Um, have you applied your modifier for the subdivide yet? 
If so, make sure that your vertices are all merged together around this section. That could be an issue. So, like, um, when I said that sometimes vertices will be over top of each other, you can see that this is all one. But what you may have to do is go from the inside, where you know that this is going to be a problem, select all of it, then go M by distance or at center. Uh, that could be an issue. I'm really unclear as to what it is that I was looking at there. You try it again with the LMP body? Cool. Though those holes are meant to be there. Wait, so what lines are we talking about? Oh, you mean how this all looks meshy? Uh, like you can actually see the squares individually around? Is that what you're talking about? What you do is right click on this so you make sure it's selected smooth shading. Uh, if you want certain things to shade smooth and certain things to not shade smooth, what you'll do is you go into shade flat then you'd only select what you want. So say I only wanted paint. Uh, make sure nothing is selected currently. Then I'll go select on that, that'll select all my paint stuff, then I go mesh, shading, smooth faces. Now, all of this is shaded smooth, and this is not shaded smooth. Uh, there's different ways of using shade smooth. You don't, I'm not saying that this is what your issue is, I'm just saying that uh, this is ways in which you can use the shade smoothing thing. Now that I've got it selected, I can just go shade smooth on everything though. Because it doesn't really matter. Wait, I put a seam line in here? Oh, I didn't realize. Let's make sure that everything is looking good on the inside. We're all good. Nothing is a problem. Uh, now, let's bring in... Cylinder. And we're going to rename this Roll Bar. Oops, that was Caps Lock. You know what? Doesn't really matter, does it? Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Roll Bar. Uh, the other way you can do nomenclature on things is if you don't want to have spaces, you'll go roll for the first word, uh, no capital on the first word, but then for every consecutive word, uh, so every word afterwards, you would go with a capital for the first thing. So bar, and if I wanted to change this also to chrome on the name, uh, V for version, like, I, yeah, you get the idea. I'm just going with roll bar. Uh, generally, you try to keep them all in the same sort of uh, name format. Uh, this is all applied. So what we're going to do is we're going to now select this and this and go join. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't want to work with the original. So we're going to go shift D. That is selected. Now that's selected. Right click, join. Good. They're now the same thing. Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, hold on first. We're going to give this trim uh let's just go miscellaneous trim no miscellaneous trim 2 good we don't want it to be the same miscellaneous trim as that one what is that one oh that was just trim okay so it wasn't going to be the same anyway do i put in glass yeah we're going to put in glass i forgot to do that but we could do that now uh this doesn't line up perfectly does it what do we got for glass. Okay, so there is a lip on the body which the glass is bolted onto and the lip of the body uh, yeah, matches the shape of the glass. Hey, welcome a room in your... you. <laughs> Erumenino. Got that name. Welcome Swartkin. Hey Phil, are you going? Uh, are you using the automation add-on for Blender? Uh, with it, you can export the model with modifiers with the mirror modifier. Uh, no, I'm. The reason why I'm not doing that is because I work with bodies different than they do. So uh, I also don't have that. No. Let's go in. Have I got this edge split? No, I don't. Let's go in. An edge split. It's all the way around. You gotta make sure that now that we're not working in mirrored anymore, that you go in, make sure that everything is selected on both sides. And edge split. There we go, and that's a little bit better. A little bit of a weirdness here, but eh, there's not really a whole lot that can be done about that, unfortunately. Are we good? What was the next thing I was gonna do? Yeah, windows. Okay. 
Let's create the little bevel line first, and then we'll bring the window out from that. So first we're going to go with Add Mesh Plane. Uh, move that again to there. Go to the modifier. Mirror. GZ. And then we're going to move this one into general position. Get this lined up. We're going to do the brim part first. Then we're going to do... So like the lower brim part first which sticks out a little bit then we're gonna do this little bit then we're gonna do the glass hmm do I maybe do this with the body no there's not really a good enough seam here my three horsepower car really gear sound is like a monster please help I'm scared of it I don't know what you mean tutorial streams welcome canola skies yes uh, streams for tutorials you know I really should have done this earlier i can i just forgot honestly do we just forget this and do glass no nah, we'll do it this way i forgot i have that selected cool all right yeah i've i've made a big boo-boo Because now I'm going to have to line this all up. I could go back and undo all of the unwrapping stuff I've done. But I also can't be bothered. And this... Just gonna be tedious. So I'm just doing this for now, then we're gonna extrude this three dimensionally in a bit. Sorry to ask again, I was at work, but do you know how to make shape keys work in automation trying to add? Uh, if you just make the shape keys in Blender, they automatically apply in the SDK and they should just work in automation. They don't, you've done something wrong. Do I know what that is? No. No, I don't. Is that too big of a brim? You know what, actually this brim might be a little bit big. Do we actually have... Yeah, that is really big. Uh, you know what I was thinking of? This brim here seems bigger than this brim here. Uh, let's bring that back. Yeah, that brim is way too big. Oops. How about that? That does seem a little bit better. Keep working on this. I could probably almost do a path for this, couldn't I? Yeah, you know what? That's what we're going to do. A, delete, vertices. Uh, we can actually get rid of that plane altogether. Let's go with add, curve. Uh, do I want to go NURBS? I think I want to go NURBS for this. I'm really new at NURBS, by the way. 
Uh, ooh. do I want to get nubs? Maybe. Hmm, I don't know. Have you ever considered making a full car and blender? Yes, I have. Uh, we'll take this one to zero. GY. Will nerves do what I want? I'm unclear. I've not really done a whole lot of work with nerves. I'm just not seeing what I want. Um, now let's go in, add, mesh. I'm gonna go with a plane. I'm gonna turn everything else invisible. Let's see. That shape seems to be about right. We can work on this later. E. Uh, then let's grab this E E so you want. There we go, we can do that. Then from here, grab this E and E. And that'll basically be our windshield for now. Uh, let's bring the body back. Let's bring back the nerves path, wherever that went. There we go. Apply array. And apply... Curve? Nerves curve. Have I done that wrong? Yeah, I don't think nerves is what I want. Let's go ahead, add mesh... No, add curve... Bezier? Yeah, maybe a Bezier is more what we want. Now, can we change the rotation of this? Hmm. No. Wait, there we go. Do we have rotation on this? No, we do not have rotation on this. Hey Phil, check your private messages. I sent you a rear gear sound of my car seven pings somebody's getting blocked don't ping me in the middle of a stream that's like rule number one I do have a regular discord which you can go to so we're going to change the y position to zero and the Y position of the anchor here to make sure it's a zero as well. Okay. Oh, does that? Oh, sweet. Okay. Z position to zero as well. Okay. We just want to have that zeroed out. Great. All right. Let's move this into place. G. What about there? Other one. G. Start moving you into place. Then because these bits are really big, we don't need that. Scale them down. And this is going to take a little bit of time, but we'll get there eventually. And we just want to get this to fit place. Now that'll do, then we're going to go back to, was it that? Yeah, that. That is way too big. We'll scale that down in a minute. Uh, change you to Bezier Curve. And how do we set this? Fit Curve? Ah, Bezier Curve. There we go. There we go. 
Then from here we can extrude. There we go. That's what we want to see. Except that's not really lining up how we want that to line up. So let's go back into this. And I want to move. So then the edge line is about here. I think we're going to clean this up a little bit as well because we don't need nearly as many vertices as this. So move that to there. And that to there. Uh, you know what? We can also probably move that to there. Have less vertices. And have that to there. Created a bit of a weird triangle, but it's fine. Then with that one and that one selected. No, actually. Uh, that is way too big for a windshield, so we're going to scale everything down. Is that... How big is this windshield? It's big at some points, but we can change that eventually. We have to turn this body into this one. Uh, that will do. Alright, how's that looking? That's looking all fine, I believe. Yes, good. So the next one doesn't start until this thing ends in entirely. So you do have to make sure that these edges are flat. Now, body back. Where is... Ah, the Bezier curve. And... You can go ahead and rotate this to however. We're just gonna get this to line up, basically. Uh, how far around does this go? It goes all the way back. Do we have that here on our images? It says it's only got a windshield to here. Oh, goodness gracious. So our one is not exactly the same as this one. Let's see if there's different versions here. That one looks like it goes all the way back, but it's so goddamn blurry. That one also goes all the way back. That is a different version of the car. Hey. <laughs> that one only has a small lip, but I think that's a different car altogether. That's 1985? That's weird. I don't think that's a 1985 Ferrari body. I think they've taken it in 1985. Uh, yeah, that's not the 1950s version of the car. Here, that looks like a toy model and it goes all the way back. Here, it only goes to about here and then it's uh, just the curve thing on its own. <gasps> uh, that goes all the way back. That one only goes to about there. Jesus. What a pain in the bite. Wait, what has that got? A very small picture. Great, love it. This one, I believe, goes all the way back as well. Ugh. I think we're going to go with the version that goes all the way back. I could make two different versions, so then people could select their own thing. But that's more effort than I'm willing to put in right now. Uh, to about there? Yeah, to somewhere about there. Let's apply. I wonder how I do this. Do I apply the mirror modifier here? Hey, I do. Uh, the windshield also comes up back at a much greater angle, but what I can do is once I've applied this um, uh, array and everything, it will uh, be editable to be the right shapes that I want. Okay, I think this lip needs to come down. So we're going to edit this now. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the right one. U. G. Z. Hopefully that comes down far enough. 
Uh, also rotate that a little bit to make it look like it's actually a cut off bit of metal. And how much does this curve in? It curves in a lot at the front, but not so much at the back. Would never have patience to do this. Once I tried to make two chairs and a table in Blender, it took two hours-ish. Chairs should be rather simple. It comes down to a lot of practice. I'm going into a lot more, a lot more detail than what I used to in my models. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to also... Make that a lot thicker. To make life easier for myself. As you can see here, that's now doing a lot better job of lining up. This on the Bezier curve can move up here. And here. Uh, it fits quite well around there, but not so much around here. I wonder if... Because I just want this to match up. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Hold the fun. How do I do this again? Period. Yes. Uh, oh, it does match up there. Okay. Just here it doesn't match up. Period. Okay. No, rotating this angle does not get that to do the result that I want. That's unfortunate. Uh, we can go through and edit everything anyway. That's mostly good. There's only just a few little lips here and there. Uh, I think what I might also do is widen this out a bit. And then we'll use subdivide later. GX. And it's still mostly in the right place. That's all good. What if we go into the curb again? GY. There we go. That's about the right place. Now I'm seeing bigger gaps. Am I? Yeah, I am. I can just see it. Uh, Z. GX. Okay, good. Uh, then... Looks like there really wants to be one in here, doesn't there? Uh, Z, so I'm, what I'm doing rotating uh, is rotating along the Z axis. Now, yeah, how's that looking? Mm. Oh, there we go. That's fixed that issue. That's now creating a lip all the way on the inside. And that's kind of how I want it to be because otherwise it's going to be a pain in the butt. Um, hopefully that works. Good. Where'd the roll bar go? Oh, yeah, I've not applied the roll bar yet. If I'm working on my is the first body I've ever made, not complete yet, and it's going great. Apart from the indentations that sting me in the eyeballs. Wait, there's indentations? I don't know what you mean. Or are you talking about a different one? Uh, you can convert it to a mesh and edit it to your likeling menu. Yep, that's what I plan to do. It would be easier. Yep, it would be. And what I'm doing right now is getting it lined up so then I have the best chance possible of making it easier on myself. Is there a gap here? There is a gap here. Okay. What if I rotate in that angle? There we go. Okay. That's all good. How's this seam line along here going? That's going really mostly good. <laughs> mostly. Almost. No. I can't get it to rotate the way I want it to rotate, unfortunately. 
I wish I knew if there was a way to do that, but oh well. Uh, I think we're good for that part now. Now, we're going to go in here. I'm going to go with... Array apply? And apply that. We'll leave mirror for the time being. And then we're going to apply... Subdivide surface. Oh dear. Oh, hold on. Is that? Yeah, good. We got that back. Um, I f completely forgot. Uh, we're going to delete unwanted geometry. I'm a numpty. So we got... Uh, all of these extra things which are creating extra faces in here that we don't need. We don't need faces on the ends. We do for the end, but not for all of it. Edges. Okay. Now that is hollow. Is that the right ones? That's the right ones. Good. Okay. There we go. Ooh, do we want to create a face between here to here? I feel we might want to. Otherwise, we're going to have problems with the glass. We can maybe deal with that later. Uh, so now, apply and apply. Then, subdivide surface. And now we're keeping all of our edges. Let's go in and set certain edges to be sharper. Why is it not... A, M, by distance? There we go. Alright. That one and that one, we're going to turn the mean crease up. This one and this... Nope. Actually, yeah, you know what? And that one. Mean crease up. That one. Mean crease up. And look at that! We didn't have to model at all. Most of it's all going well. Hey, presto. We're also going to do a mean crease here. Do we want it on the inside as well? You know, yeah, we do. Mean crease there as well. Uh, actually. Oh, okay. That was 0.95, not 0.1. Okay. Now to modifi modify? Modify everything. These lines are posted in the F1 body that start from the holes that are in dentations I'm making. Do we have that opened in a bigger image? No. I think I may have closed it off. Oh. You know what? I don't know. Why is this not filled in anyway? If people are going to place things over it, that's up to them. Hey Phil, select the borders of the model you want in the array and select Shift E and use your mouse to increase the crease. This is really helpful. Are you talking about what I just did with the crease line? If so, I get it. Sorry for jumping the gun on you there. Now we're creating faces along the edge here. Ooh, that's an issue. There we go. Why is this not... All solid. It should be. Ah, there we go. Okay, now it's solid. What have I got that's not solid? That's one, that's one, that's one, that's one, and that's one. Weird. It's not coming out solid. Ah, you know what? We should also select the back end here. I just recently learnt, because I looked it up, how to do, um, center your camera on the thing that you're looking at, and that is numpad period. There's other ways of doing it, but that works for me, because I have a thing. Yeah, but shift D is shortcut, really helpful, but it was before you did it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, alright, this is looking fairly good. I'm gonna turn this off for now. I'm going to start working on making this now match. 
Uh, I think I know the way in which I'm going to do this. We're going to make sure that that is the one we got selected. And then... Active elements, good. Then rotate. And then we're going to drag this out. And now I get to do it for all of them. Yay! Uh, ooh. I wish I had a way to, like, get an easier... Like, align this node to that node for my viewport sort of thing. What am I looking at? What's happening? Oh, because it's mirrored. Then we'll grab those. And move them into place. Ah, uh, top viewers disagreeing with uh, other viewport. Trying to line this up with the previous node a little bit. Then rotate it over. And grab these. And move them into place. It's a real pain sometimes. Welcome Yuka, how's it going? Are you a channel member? Am I thinking of somebody else? I think I might be thinking of somebody else. <laughs> Actually, we're going to select this one. We're going to go period on it. Then we'll select the other nodes. I'm hoping that this is doing what I want it to do. Um, that's not the right thing. What I want is this into... There, that one. Um, very angle slowly comes back from its angle as it goes towards the edge. That's going to be hard to judge. Hmm. In fact, actually, we might change that. We'll start the easing process from there. Alright. Uh, I think I'm using the wrong keybind for that now. We'll get there eventually. Hmm. Actually, we probably want that to be less of an angle now. And move you into place. Hmm, yeah, I think this is starting to come together. Oh, no, that's way out of place. Oh my god! How's that so far out of place? Okay, I think we're probably going to end the curve mostly about here. The rest of the side glass we might bring in a little bit. I see doing a little 3D modeling today, this looks a lot better than my S13. I don't know. Yesterday I was trying to fix a weird thing which happened to my mod. Turns out I 
I'm extremely stupid and I just messed up the order of modifications. Yes, doing things in order I found more and more is very important. You know what, we're going to undo all of this movement I just did. I just realized that I didn't have the uh, base part selected as well. I'm also going to do this in stages maybe. Alright, that's what we're aiming for. This is starting to get more and more complicated as time goes on. But we'll get there. Knees. How's that looking? Looking okay. This is chill music. I like it. How does... Oh, it looks almost like it's cut off, honestly. Like, they've done it afterwards. Oh, that's going to be hard to do. so messy. This is so super jank. Alright. Now we're doing on the side here. Subdivide. Turn that back on. Turn mirror back on. Shade smooth. Shade smooth. Hmm. Except for the fact that this is like got a lip along here. Uh, I bet you if I look hard enough, I'll find one where it does actually have, yes, a little bit of a bow there. That one, yes, does come down a little bit before it comes out to the rear. They're all different. God damn. Bit Guy Ritchie, one five, whatever. I think every model looks messy until you finish it up and have time to clear things. Yep, I agree with that. Oh, that's even a different model. Duh. Hmm. What if I turn mirroring off? Instead, do this. Probably going to mess things up a little bit. Uh, what do we see on the big picture? From here? I swear this is a replica and not the real thing. I don't know. Um... It does get narrower towards the end, so we're going to go here, we're going to select that. Rotate it to be a bit shorter. S, Y. And even angle it over just a little bit. Yeah, that's got a round curve as well at the end. We'll do that in a minute. Mirror back on. Doing a little bit better. I almost feel like I'm listening to automation music right now. It's very automation-esque. Yeah, that's good. Alright. Uh, I'm going to go here to these nodes. And then I'm going to stop that from being a solid edge. 
And maybe even bevel it. Hmm. Maybe bevel that as well? Is that... No, that's the wrong thing to do. That's what I wanted to do. Good. Done. And this will all be... How do I do this? Optimal display? What? Why is it not showing up? Am I doing the wrong thing? Huh. Why am I not seeing... I'm confused. Things are not acting not right. Alright, that's fine. Um, now we just got to make sure that we're all fitting and butting up to the body. There we go. We've got one little crack here. Oh, okay. That's a sizable crack. Uh, can we see that better from inside, maybe? Yeah, we can. Grab, I think, those? Yeah, we'll grab that one as well. Then... This is really hard to see. Turn that off and that off. We'll select the appropriate corresponding nodes everywhere else on it. That one. And that's it. Okay. Bring the body back. And... Actually, what we might do... Is... Rotate that. Oh, that's weird. Ah, that's why it's weird. Because I was doing it wrong. Let's turn you all off. Rotate you a little bit. And move you down a little bit. Yeah. Good. Okay. What have we got here? Is that... Yeah. Alright. Accidental little bit of overlap there. Now, the reason why I've got the glass two-sided is so then when in automation and in BeamNG, this side you'll see the glass and this side you'll also see the glass. Um, I think we're done, are we? You guys see any issues here? Hey, Chris Games, how's it going? Bundling gets very therapeutic when things start to line up. Yeah, it does feel really nice. Like the uh, payoff of your patient sort of thing. Firebug. The music does have automation vibes. I mean, it did. I just took a really long time to read it. Swagbucks. Hey, Phil. How you doing? Me? Doing just alright. I'm about to get really annoyed because I'm going to have to now line up my UV meshes, which is going to be a pain in the butt. But ugh, we, we can live with it. Um, I think I have a plan for that. Let's go ahead... We'll name that window for now. We're going to duplicate that. Get rid of that one. And apply and apply. Is that... Uh, you know what? I probably didn't want to do it exactly then. But we'll go along here. Go, no. Go along here. It's got all the way across. Good. Go along here. Good. How far does that come back here? That goes all the way. Good. Select this. Edge split. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't want to edge split yet, do I? I want to first unwrap it. UV unwrap. Ah, oh, you know what? It wants to be a pain in the butt, too. Um, I have an idea. We don't need this line here along the bottom. But it goes all the way around. Damn it, really? 
That's annoying. I have a solution. There, did that deselect everything? Good. Let's get rid of that as well. And get rid of that as well. Then, because this will be stupidly hard to see anyway, just make sure that we've not gotten anything else that we don't want selected. Wait, what the hell? How did this deselect through the body? Damn it, alright, let's go do that again. Good, okay. If I zoom out too far, it gets like into clipping issues. So we'll stay not so zoomed out. Now we're doing much better. I'm not seeing any missed vertices or edges, sorry. Go in, deselect that. And delete. Oh, you know what? Actually, we'll go into this mode now. We'll get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. All right, delete vertices. Now, it's going to be hollow, but that is absolutely fine. We don't care, because having a look in here, you cannot see it at all. You're going to have to, like, get really in here and have a look, but even then, you're unlikely to see it still. Very hard to see. I will make this glass in a minute. Now, UV unwrap. There we go. And there's our windshield. I wish I could angle this. Easily. Hey, Phil, select the sharp edges from the windows. Go to Edge tab and select Mark Sharp. Makes. Oh! Is there a different way to do this? I usually use Edge Split. And then what? Go into the Edge tab. Mesh. Shading. That's faces. Sharp edges. Has that done what I wanted to do? Mesh. Shading. Sharp edges. Now that's not doing what I want to do, so I don't know what it is exactly what you're asking for. On, you know what, I can kind of see it, but I don't think it's giving the result I want. Let's just quickly do a different result. Uh, edge split, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, edge split. Yeah, edge split gives me the result I want instead. Unless you're meaning a different way. Has to be in the edges tab? I don't know what you mean. Oh, that tab! Oh, Mark Sharp, okay. Oh, that hasn't done what I wanted to do. Edge? Shop room for the image on uh, mark freestyle marks in edge crease. That's not doing what I wanted to do. Edge No. Unfortunately it doesn't give the result I want because even still it's got this weird shade in the middle and I don't want to have to go through and fix all of that. The edge is selected. It's really hard to see. Alright, you know what? Let's go in. I mean, crease zero. Yeah. See? These are creased. Doesn't give me the result I want. So we can go in. Edge. Clear seam. Clear sharp. There. Select the edge you want. Make it sharp. Then mark sharp. I don't know what you mean by make it sharp. Then mark it sharp. But we'll try it again. Uh, face. Face, sorry. He said, make it sharp, then mark it sharp. I don't know what you mean. Oh, it's worth a try. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes, 
Like, why is there a shade line here? Why is... Why is that? That doesn't make sense. It's directly in line. There is nothing that it should be interfering with. To fix this and use your process, I'd have to select this and have to like then uh, go individual vertices and merge them up. And I just, that's too much effort. I can just go with a mark seam. Um, we're going to grab all of this. We go here, join. Dejoin that. Deselect that. Now we're going to select all of this. Then we're going to join them together. And it remembers my selection. We're going to select everything here. Then this. You can just move in here. And scale it down. Oh, it's scaling to that still, is it? Median point. What the hell? What the hell? Why was that still selected? Let's make sure that nothing else is selected. Good, okay. Do that again. Now the reason why I'm doing it this way is one, because most people are not going to be cutting away the windshield. And two, most people aren't going to be cutting away the interior. So I don't care if this goes in here. What we can do is go select opposites, go A... For now, we're going to go unpin. We're going to select these lines. Is that done what I want? Kind of. Yes, it does. Okay. So you can see that this is exactly the area around there, and we just want to keep everything within that edge. But I was good, and I had that right the first time around. If I wanted to make this line up a little bit better, what I would have done before I mirrored it is do other things. Now, let's go in... Uh, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to select these. How's that looking? Good. Okay, we're going to control plus this on the numpad till we got all glass selected. Uh, actually, we're going to switch just to face select mode as well. Good. This might show up a little bit weird in automation, but kind of done with it for now. Good. Now, this is going to get glass. That's not the right page. This is. Windows. A sign. This is not going to be Actually, you know what? Control I. No. That's not what I wanted. Frick. Alright. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, that's this is what I want. L, Windows, deselect, in here, new material, paint. I'm gonna call this paint miscellaneous two and assign. Okay. Now that's going to paint separately. We're going to do our crease lines in a minute. Uh, also what I want to do, I reckon... Oh, that's still selected, is it? Oh, that's fine. We'll just... Uh... Oh, that's not doing it. I have to go this mode. Right, let's do that again. Okay. Uh, good. Actually, we can undo that. Don't need that selected. This, then we're going to go to lip placements, deselect that, and we're going to give this a two-tone. Paint, two-tone, assign. Alright, so then when they go into paint, they can paint this to be a different color from that, if they want to have options for paint colors. What if you try to do the right tabs where you find materials properties in the area full of tabs where in one is called object... I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, uh, auto-smoothing? Never do auto-smoothing. Auto-smoothing just doesn't work properly. 
If I could auto smooth, but like control things to be done differently, then yes. But no, it does everything all together. All right, let's go in. Oops, that's the wrong selection. We don't need that no more. How's that going? That's going okay. Actually, you know what? For the time being, we'll leave that one as it is. We just need a few different edges. And that one. How's that looking over here? Good. Let's go in and do you and you. I'm also going to do you and you. This is a little bit of a time consuming part, but not the worst thing in the world. Uh, we'll leave that edge split. And the glass has this weird shade line along it, so I think, yeah, we are going to go in and actually still fix this. Uh, do we do it on both sides? You know what, I think I'm happy with it not being on the inside. I think that gives a nice sort of weird look to it. Edge split. There we go. Giving us a nice good look, and then on the inside it's given us... You know what, no, that does actually still look bad. Alright, yeah, we'll fix that. Because we've already, um, mesh unwrapped... Uh, sorry, UV unwrapped, this doesn't particularly matter that we're using edge split. And I think edge split gives me a much greater control that I want. There we go. That now looks correct. And UV unwrapping, uh, using everything else is all gonna be fine still. Uh, let's go in, and yeah, next playlist. Sweet. Okay, uh, yeah, we want this to also be... Is that the whole thing? You know, let's go in here, get rid of that crease. And we're gonna mark this sharp as well. Sorry, edge split it as well. So now this lip that I was talking about comes to a nice flat edge. Do we want anything else? I think we're good. Pretty much everything else, except this still looks a little bit ugly. But oh well, it'll be fine. I think. It'll be fine enough. God, that's horrific. Ugh. Um... Yeah, okay. You know, I could almost put that shark nose bit in there and make that a different paintable part to make it a little bit easier. In fact, actually, I think I'm gonna do that and give it the exact dimensions that we want. Uh, we're not gonna edit this. Actually, what we're gonna do instead is go mesh, add, cylinder, Give that like, what was it, 32? Yeah, that'll do for now. Oh, you know what? That's bad. Object, apply, all transforms and scales. Uh, should have been editing it from this position only. And we're gonna do something just a little bit stupid. Uh, I think that will do. And let's see if we're lucky enough to have this work. What I want to do is... Boolean and select this. All right, we'll find B like that. Cylinder. Uh, I don't want it to be a join. I just want it to intersect. Maybe no union. Mm, that's not helping us either. No. 
What I was hoping is it would just create a seam line around at some point. And that does like weird, ugly things. Solve options, self intersect. No, we probably don't want that actually. Oh no! I've not saved in a really long time. Please tell me there was an auto save. I had that set up a while ago. Oh no! I think I hadn't set up the auto save. Oh no! I forgot to save and my auto save was on my previous install of Windows, which I did like a month ago. <laughs> what have I done? Oh my god. Oh my f fucking god. Jesus Christ. I hope you've all enjoyed today's stream. That is the end of the stream. <sighs> Everything is not lost. Fast, fast. Okay. Uh, what's the autosave feature? How do I do that? Hold on. No, that's not the one. That's the one. Are you on my Discord? Quickly jump into, um... This. How do I do it? What do you mean the autosave feature? File recover. Last session. No. Recover. Autosave. Recover autosave? File recover autosave. Copy buffer. File recover. Why is it bringing up the other one? Is the other one still open? The other one's not even open. Yesterday, that recover autosave. Why was it not auto-saving the one that I had open? Gene 17, that was ages ago. Quit buffer, auto-save. Yeah, no, nah, that's unfortunate. That's really, really unfortunate. No, no, click the autosave. That was way too long ago. If that's what you're trying to... I don't even think I had the other one open. I don't... Why is it opening up? This. Why is this the autosave? Revert? I don't know what revert does. You've not responded with anything. I don't know. Have I saved? No, I haven't saved the file. <laughs> this is, yeah, that was my problem. I did the derp. I did the derp. No, that was from beginning to end. So yes, that is the end of the stream. Maybe it's in the file of the original Blender. I... Yeah. I, I never made a save of it because I'm an idiot. Always be saving your work. How did I forget that? How did nobody be like, hey, Phil, save your work? Uh, it happens, yes. Damn it. That was what? Three hours of work right there. And we were right at the cusp of being done as well. We were just doing the final little touch-ups and we we're going to... Then do the, um, 
uh, body keying and all that sort of stuff to like uh, add uh, shape movements. I can't even. Shape keys. No, not shape keys. Armature stuff. Whatever. You get the idea. The stuff that allows you to morph body morphs. That's what we were talking about. Yeah. I was about to do the body morphs, which was going to be probably like 10 minutes. Rather simple stuff. We weren't going to make it wide. We're just going to make it longer and maybe stretch some things upwards. So it makes it a lot simpler. And that was it. Send it over to the other thing. I'm probably going to redo this all. Probably do it a little bit better this time as well. Then what I'm going to do is do another stream at another point in time. And do that. Maybe Do we want to play a different game, maybe? Uh, what, are, what other games do I have right now that we could play? Uh, I could finally break out Automobilista 2. What is happening? Uh... I know, I'm feeling really flat, actually. I do want to play a game. Hold on. I'm not actually showing you guys what I'm seeing, am I? There we go. Um, I've got Automobilista 2. I could play Battle Lord. That's a good chill game. I know, I'm really flat. I'm so bummed. Yeah, I already knew how to make it. I did learn a lot. Yeah, so making the second time one. Yeah. This does suck, Space Warrior. This sucks a lot. I'm so bummed by that. I just want to go eat junk food, but I don't have any junk food because I've not been to the store in like five, six days or something like that. So I'm probably going to have to drive to a fast food place because it's currently... 3.11 a.m. So, there's not really any normal stores open right now. Ugh. It's natural for everyone using Blunder. Thank you, M4T, for the, um, little bit of consolidation there that, yes, most people will fall into this mistake sometimes. That's why there is a saying, and it is a very common saying, always be saving. Or always be saving your work or something to that effect those sorts of sayings are very common in all sorts of like uh computer work always be saving your work i completely derped hard so goddamn hard i cannot it is ah so stupid that i did that Ugh. well let's go ahead and start saying goodbye to everybody Goodbye, Space Warrior. Thanks for having us. Swartkin, thank you for the uh, helpful tips. You did uh, introduce me to some things I didn't know before. Swagbucks, thank you for joining us. Yeah, the big oofs all round on me. Just, oh, all around my face. Feel forgiven. Forgo, forgo saving? Wait, what? Forgo saving. Do you mean forget or forego? Because forego saving is just a terrible plan. And it's apparently one that I inadvertently did. Uh, noob Enthusiast, thank you for joining us and for the consoling. That sucks, Phil. Well, have a good night. Yeah, thank you. I am 3 Firebird. I am so bummed out now. I was going to go through all the process of taking it to uh, BeamNG and then do all of the modding that I do for BeamNG cars, including like audio modifications, all that sort of stuff. To cheer you up a little bit, maybe. I lost two cars like that. Oh dear. Oh, that's harsh, bud, bro. Uh, who else are we going to say goodbye to here? Canola Skies, thank you for joining me. Uh, Chris Games, thank you for joining, even if it was only for a short little bit. Space Warrior, thank you for joining us. If uh, you want to do, uh, if anybody wants to do, um, Timestamps, at least for what we have done so far, that would be really helpful for other viewers that are coming in and wanting timestamps. Uh, Tuttercraft, thank you. Um, I'm sorry that Blender for you is really tricky. This is a lesson. If you learn nothing else from my stream, always be saving. Uh, programmer, a uh, programmer, gamer, thank you for being around, and you have been around for a very long time. Uh, Arda, I've only just read your comment now about, like, face cam, please. No, uh, I explained why no face cam at the beginning of the stream. Uh, that's pretty much everybody else except for... Erumino. Yes, thank you for joining us. I've been here, but I haven't said anything. Ah, welcome, TR673. 
Well, not. Thanks for the stream. The knowledge is not to be lost. Will not be lost yet. Okay, that is everything. I'm done. Uh, you know, there is one last tip for uh, using Blender, and it's actually really important. More than more important than saving, and always.